Do you like to be scared or listen to true real life horror stories? Good, then you're in the right place. We have new and very frightening real life true stories to share with you. Warning, if you get scared easily, leave now. But if you decide to stick around, be prepared to be scared out of your skin. So, here we go. Let the scare begin. Our first super spooky horror story is based on the Lemp Mansion by Adam Johan. The Lemp Mansion is in St. Louis which is reputed to be among the most haunted locations in America. Because of its terrible history and connection to a wealthy bear baron, it is a good place to start because it is an incredibly spooky, true American horror story. German immigrant Adam Johann Lemp was the first to brew and market larger style beer in the United States. He kept the barrels cool before modern refrigeration by storing them in a network of caves beneath the city. Although it was a success, it was actually taken to the next level by his son, William Lemp. William Lemp and his wife Julia constructed the ominous mansion in the historic Benton Park in the 1860s so they could raise a family and be closer to the industrial business. Following the terrible death of Frederick Lemp, his favorite of his five sons from tuberculosis-related complications in 1904, William Lemp committed suicide. The following year, the house was sold and converted into a boarding house, which is when rumors of the hauntings began to circulate. Edwin was the youngest surviving Lemp child at the time. Destination America reported that witnesses have felt searing sensations, heard doors smash, and disembodied sobbings and groanings. In addition to hosting events like weddings, murder mystery dinners, and even ghost hunts, the Lemp Mansion is now a restaurant and inn. Moving on to the next horrifying tale, it's about the haunted La Lurie House in New Orleans. In 1832, Dr. Louis LaLaurie and his wife Daphne settled into their cruel palace in the French Quarter of New Orleans. They were well known for their extravagant dinner parties and influential social network. The pair had a dark and twisted private life, despite the fact that their friends recognized them as the epitome of society's best and most refined. Many slaves were employed to maintain the family's standard of living and Mrs. Lallery was especially brutal. Neighbors noted a steady stream of new slaves entering the house without an explanation for what had happened to their forebearers. She kept her cook tied to the kitchen fireplace. When a fire occurred in 1834, the firefighters found a horrifying scene in the attic. Seven slaves in various positions suggest horrible torture, starving, shackled to the walls and in the room. When LaLaurie's misdeeds were made public, she vanished and was never seen or heard from again, but her victims weren't as fortunate. Since approximately 200 years ago, the mansion has been the subject of allegations of paranormal activity such as ghostly footsteps and moans coming from the apartment where Mrs. LaLaurie held her slaves. Which of the above do you think is the most scary? Have you ever experienced paranormal activity around you? Let us know your thoughts and experiences in the comments. That brings us to one of America's most haunted houses ever, the Amityville House of Horror. This place gives me the creeps. Including his two parents and four siblings, 23-year-old Ronald J. DeFeo Jr. shot and killed his entire family on November 13, 1974 as they slept in their beds. Ronald was sentenced to life in prison after admitting to the murders. George and Kathleen Lutz seized the opportunity to purchase the majestic home at a discount just one year later. They only stayed there for a month before hastily relocating, and this is a tale of what they went through during those 28 days. It has been the topic of considerable conjecture, serving as inspiration for both the book and movie adaptations of the Amityville Horror. The Lutz family asserted that they were awakened every morning at 3.15 a.m. They later discovered that this was roughly the time of the DeFeo slayings. They said that their kids started sleeping on their stomachs at the same time the dead DeFeo kids were discovered. Numerous phantom sounds, odors, and strange events including green slime pouring from the walls were described by the witnesses. Many of these details have come under scrutiny 
but the Lutz family is adamant that the mansion is still haunted by its grisly past. Our next horror story takes place at the Ackley House in Nyack, New York. This traditional Queen Anne home is located on the Hudson River across from Sleepy Hollow, New York and is known as the Ackley House after its former residence, the Ackley family. Although it is said that the several ghosts who haunted one lavator place were benign, they were nevertheless active enough to persuade matriarch Helen Ackley to publish a national piece about them in Reader's Digest. The house became a stop on neighborhood ghost tours as a result of the article's success, which had unfavorable effects when it came time to sell the property in the late 1980s. The Ackleys became embroiled in a court dispute about whether or not they had to tell the Stambowski family about the nature of the haunted house. The New York Supreme Court declared Ackley House to be haunted in a landmark ruling that has come to be known as the Ghostbusters ruling. This allowed the buyers to back out of the deal and receive a partial refund of their down payment. Since then, a number of famous people have lived at one La Veta place, including the musician Ingrid Michaelson. Are you enjoying watching this video? Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more like it. It is coming. Stay tuned to see the most scary horror story at the end. Keep watching. Let's check out the spooky Chop Chop House story in Boyce, Idaho. The house at 805 West Linden Street in Boyce, Idaho is difficult to overlook. A two-story, 2,728-square-foot craftsman-style home has a layer of suit covering it, damaged and boarded up windows, and rubbish scattered all over the yard, giving it the appearance of an abandoned horror movie set. But the real story is considerably more terrifying. Locals call it the Chop Chop House, a crude allusion to the horrifying killing that happened there more than 30 years ago, or the boy's murder house, which raises even more eyebrows. Many people who have lived in the neighborhood or have even rented a room in the house claim that the basement in particular has a paranormal presence. Strange fluids oozing down the walls, shadowy creatures emerging and departing suddenly, and more have all been reported. Here it is. The final frightening story is from Grey Gardens in East Hampton, and it will chill you to the bone. The opulent Grey Gardens home in East Hampton has a colorful history filled with ups and downs. A wealthy couple bought the four acres of land the home presently stands on in 1895 before the home was constructed in the early 1900s. The site is in the Georgica Beach neighborhood of East Hampton, one of the most expensive areas in the world. In 1913, it was purchased by the head of a coal firm whose wife, Anna Gilman Hill, had the elaborate concrete walls from the garden brought from Spain. Due to the color of the sand dunes, cement garden walls, and sea mist, the residence was given the name Grey Gardens. Later in 1923, Edith Bovier Bale, the maternal aunt of Jackie Onassis Kennedy and Lee Radziwill, and her family purchased the house. In part, because Big Eddie Bale and her daughter Little Eddie Bale couldn't afford to maintain the mansion on their own, the house fell into ruin and was invaded by cats and raccoons. In a 1975 documentary by Albert and David Maselis, the women's story and star power became well known. It is said that Big Eddie's soul is still present in Grey Gardens, keeping watch over the home, having hung onto the property until her passing in 1977. Sally Quinn, a writer and journalist well known for her article in the Washington Post, is one of the believers. She bought the house from Little Eddie in 1979 and firmly believes that it is haunted. So, what are your thoughts regarding this video? Which of these stories do you think is the scariest? Do share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time.